What really gets me going about Home Advisor, and the reason I continue to follow both the class action lawsuit and now this FTC complaint, is that they intentionally targeted new contractors and individuals who were doing this on the side, nights and weekends, trying to get into the business. The ones that had the most to lose and that honestly couldn't afford to pay for leads that didn't actually exist. Just a few weeks ago, the Federal Trade Commission charged Home Advisor with cheating businesses in regards to their lead generation service. If you watch the channel, you know we did a video a little while ago regarding the class action lawsuit against Home Advisor with similar allegations. Now, while these two things aren't connected, they certainly do seem to be related. If you'd like to watch that video in its entirety in regards to the class action lawsuit, stick around to the end. We'll have it linked on the end screen of this video. Now, this report is based on the FTC's report issued on March 11th of 2022, uh, for a full copy of that report, check out the description below, and I'll have it linked there. With all that being said, let's dig into exactly what the FTC is alleging against Home Advisor. All right, on March 11th of 2022, the FTC filed a complaint against Home Advisor. Now, in my research, what the administrative complaint means is it's typically just the first step in opening up the door to testimony, to trials, to basically a full-blown investigation. This is simply the early days of that investigation. This is the first step. Now, they also mentioned that Home Advisor is affiliated with Angie. What this means is Home Advisor is owned by a company named IAG. Now, IAG is also the majority stakeholder in Angie. Now, Angie, you might also recognize by the names Angie's List, Angie Services. If it starts with Angie, it's pretty much that company. So this specific complaint is about Home Advisor. But what we're thinking is it might also flow over into Angie, seeing that they use similar services. We'll find out here in a little bit that they're actually buying leads from roughly the same people. Anyway, the allegation is that they use a wide range of deceptive and misleading tactics in selling the home improvement project leads to service providers, whether it be fencing contractors, uh, handymen, repair companies, plumbers, electricians, basically what they're calling gig economy. Now, gig economy, when I looked it up, typically just means the exchange of labor or services for money using a web-based platform. The FTC's complaint against Home Advisor alleges that since at least the middle of 2014, it's made false, misleading, or unsubstantiated claims about the quality and source of the leads the company sells to service providers. Now, in the previous video, we talked a little bit about our experience in that a lot of the leads that we were sold through Home Advisor. Uh, had no idea that we would even be contacting them. They had filled out a few questions about an upcoming project, really just trying to get an idea of a price range of what that project would cost, uh, and then submitted their information to try to get that pricing. What they didn't understand is that Home Advisor would then package up all of their contact information and sell it to area service providers to reach out to them about their project. They just clicked on the website, answered some questions, and thought they were just going to get a price range. They had no intention of actually talking to a contractor about their project. So you can imagine that when we would call to set up an appointment, they had no interest in actually talking with us about a firm number. They were just looking for a price range. And this kind of jives with what's seen in this complaint. So it goes on to say, Home Advisor told service providers that its leads resulted in actual home improvement jobs at rates higher than Home Advisor's own data supported. So Home Advisor knew that the leads that they were selling wouldn't actually perform as good as they told the contractors they were selling them to. They knew there was a problem, and they sold them anyways. Pretty major problem. Home Advisor also misled service providers about the cost of optional one-month subscription to a software platform that Home Advisor sold along with its leads, according to the FTC's complaint. Now, this I have no experience in. When we dealt with Home Advisor, which was right around this 2015-2016 range, they really didn't try to sell us on any sort of software platform uh, alongside with the leads. I don't have any experience with that. But... It sounds like a lot of folks did. The complaint goes on to say, as a result of these misrepresentations, service providers often spent time following up on leads that were below the quality Home Advisor promised, and even more time seeking refunds from the company for those leads. Again, this was exactly our experience with Home Advisor: is uh, they had kind of a refund process where if no one picked up the phone or if the phone number was incorrect, which was fairly often you could apply for a refund. Now, the process was really difficult to get through. Often it didn't work. It ended up with having to call into 
a home advisor representative to talk to them. They would open up some sort of investigation into the lead. More often than not, you wouldn't actually get the refund. You'd get so frustrated with the process, you'd end up just leaving it. At least we did. So home advisor intentionally made it difficult to try to get a refund. You spent a lot of time trying to get the refund that ultimately often didn't end up getting, coming through. The complaint continues that Home Advisor, which also does business as Angie Leads and Home Advisor powered by Angie, recruits service providers using marketing materials and agents who call the service providers and try to persuade them to join the company's network. This is putting it mildly. So once we decided to leave Home Advisor, we told them to close our account. We wanted no part of it. We actually ended up having to cancel the credit card that they were charging. I had sent them emails. We sent them registered mail. I had called them several times. The fees just continued finally canceled the credit card. And then we got put into some sort of follow-up bucket that we were getting phone calls three, four times a week. They were pretty heavy handed trying to get us to come back, trying to cut rates, trying to promise even better leads than before, which why weren't they selling those leads to begin with? Heavy handed is, is probably even a light way to put it. It was pretty aggressive marketing practices, but this is how they operated. They need to utilize these heavy handed practices because contractors were leaving in droves or trying to leave uh, just because they realized the leads weren't quality. And as we go on into this complaint, we'll find out the reason for the low quality leads. The complaint goes on to say many of the leads home advisor sells consists of information submitted by consumers on the company's website. Okay, that's what they had told us was happening. It also resells leads it buys from third parties, known as affiliates, who generate the leads in part from web-based forms that ask consumers about potential home projects they are considering. This is the problem, is HomeAdvisor had no idea even the quality of some of these leads. Really, they were just buying a contact list from any number of affiliate programs, other websites out in the universe, they were just collecting data from people who might be considering some sort of home improvement project in the future. This is the reason we were seeing really low callbacks if we even got a message to someone regarding a fencing project. They might have not even had a fencing project. We were simply sold their contact information. They were probably just as confused as we were. All right, so towards the end of the report, it kind of boils down exactly what the complaint entails. Once you read the report, you realize it says the same thing several times. First, while HomeAdvisor states that its leads concern consumers who intend to hire a service provider soon, many of them do not. In addition, while HomeAdvisor represents that service providers will only receive leads matching the types of services they provide and their preferred geographic area, many of them do not. Again, we have firsthand knowledge of this. So we told HomeAdvisor exactly what types of fencing we install and what types of fencing we do not install. Quite often, we'd get a mix of information regarding services that we didn't install at all and that were outside of the geographical area we set within the app. We literally drew a circle around our service area and told HomeAdvisor only the leads that fell within this service area were good for us. Often, we'd get leads that were hours outside of the service area and still get charged for them. The complaint continues that HomeAdvisor also represents to service providers that its leads are from consumers who knowingly sought Home Advisor's assistance in selecting a service provider. While many of the leads it sells are actually purchased from affiliates and did not come from Home Advisor's website. This explains why many of the, the leads that we tried to reach out to via phone call and then email had no idea we were reaching them at all. They were just as confused as we were about why we were calling them about their project. The complaint concludes with a statement that the Federal Trade Commission vote to issue the complaint was four to zero. This thing's unanimous. And when you look at the comment section below the first video we did regarding the class action lawsuit, you'll see why. What really gets me going about Home Advisor, and the reason I continue to follow both the class action lawsuit and now this FTC complaint, is that they intentionally targeted new contractors and individuals who were doing this on the side, nights and weekends, trying to get into the business. The ones that had the most to lose and that honestly couldn't afford to pay for leads that didn't actually exist. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment below, either the class action lawsuit or the FTC complaint. Also, to watch the video on the class action lawsuit, it's linked here in the end screen. Also, if you find this information helpful, educational, it would mean the world if you gave it a like. To stay up to date with new videos that we put out each and every week, click the subscribe button and be sure to hit that notification bell. 
Guys, until next time, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors. I'll see you next time.